Dale treated me with utmost respect in 1981 after I won a couple of polls uh, being an outsider. He invited me to his house in January 1982. Uh, I brought some beta tapes with some ASA races and we went down in the basement and watched those races. And when we finished, I was in the Bush Clash and he wasn't. And when, it, when we finished watching my races, he said, let me show you how to win the Bush Clash. And he put his in, punched it, and we watched that. So, you know, we had a good relationship. He always raced me with a lot of respect. In 1983, all of a sudden, and I don't understand why, he decided, let me see, let me see what he'll take. And he started pestering me. He would wait for me in practice on the mile and a half. The cars were already starting to get aero sensitive and lose the side force when you had a car on the outside of you. So at a mile and a half, he'd wait for me, jump on my outside and make me bow down. I had two ways to go. I could either bow down or wreck. Okay, so he did that for a few weeks and then we're out at Michigan and I've got a bad to the bone race car. And he sees me in practice, backs off, waits, till he can get on my outside. And as quick as he did, it made me mad. And I just, somehow or another, I don't remember what I did, but I turned the table just like that and got on his outside instead. And he spun out and wrecked me. You know, <laughs> he, he lost it and cleaned my clock, both of us. And I was so mad. And, you know, but, but I knew not to run my mouth because Dale did not like that. So I wasn't gonna run my mouth. All I said was, they could all run up to me, you know, Mark, whatever, and it's, uh, we, we had a wreck, and, you know, Dale lost it on the inside of me, and uh, that's okay, you know, uh, he has a lot to lose, we can do this as much as he wants to, he has a lot to lose, he's leading the points, and I'm not in the championship battle, so we'll see how it goes, so then the next week, we go to Loudon, and he sees me, and he waits for me again, and gets on my outside at Loudon, and as soon as he did, I just doored him, it was practice, I doored him, and I don't know this for a fact, but Benny Ertel says he drove into the garage, stepped out of the car, and told Benny, he says, I think Mark's had enough. <laughs>